our gallery spaces have um, are mainly in three areas. We have a large gallery space, a main gallery space, and a small gallery space. We also do use some of the lobby areas in Burke Hall to display um, material or um, other parts of the university's collections. The Denison Museum, which is part of Denison University, has well over 7,500 objects um, from around the world in its overall collection. The museum has very significant collections of Asian and Kuna material. Um, specifically, our Burmese collection is very well noted. Um, it also has a significant fine art collection. Uh, the largest part of that fine art collection is a very impressive group of prints and drawings. This collection contains approximately 2,000 pieces, of which we're treating a little over 1,100 for the IMLS Conservation Project. Uh, the vast majority of these prints and drawings are 19th and 20th century American and European prints. Um, some notable artists and objects are, were created by you know, artists such as Warren Davis, um, Winslow Homer, Rockwell Kent, John Sloan, Giovanni Piranesi, Dumier, and Pablo Picasso, just to name a few. Uh, unfortunately, over half of our print collection have been improperly mounted to mats and backing boards with um, hinges such as linen tape and various other pressure-sensitive adhesive tapes. In its current state, the collection is difficult to mount properly for exhibition and for faculty and researchers to access without causing further damage. Several pieces in the collection have tears um, associated with that mounting, uh, especially objects that have been mounted at all four corners. The primary goal of this conservation project uh, is to remove these improper hinging materials from the uh, 1,108 pieces in the collection that are currently hinged or attached in some manner um, with linen, paper, masking, and cellophane tapes. Removing the improper hinging material from our print and drawing collection will greatly improve the overall condition of the collection um, as well as enhance its educational resource potential. And this will in effect have a huge and lasting impact on the Denison Museum's collection as a whole. In order to undertake this project, the Denison Museum has received funding from the Institute of Museum and Library Services, or IMLS, in the amount of $66,379. Along the, with the reception of this award, Denison University has agreed to share the cost of this conservation project in the amount of $91,447. We have been fortunate to receive this cooperative funding, without which the print and drawing collection would not have been able to receive the appropriate conservation treatments. In order to get ourselves ready to um, apply for a grant, we followed the uh, recommendations made by this CAP survey, um, which we changed a lot of our facilities. Uh, we um, created a secure and temperature and humidity con controlled um, collection area and storage area. Um, we changed some of our lighting. We created uh, different workspaces and um, tried to bring them up to um, the conservators' recommendations. We also um, did an inventory in 2005-2006 and implemented the Past Perfect program in order to further document our collections. Here at the Denison Museum, we're doing a grant project that was funded by the Institute of Museum and Library Services. And we are dealing with approximately under 2,000 prints and drawings that need to be rehoused, and some conservation treatment needs to be done in order to stabilize these pieces. So. The treatment that we do in paper conservation follows a method of steps that takes the paper through um, a series of treatments that will help to stabilize its condition um, and remove any improper material.
The first thing we do when we get a new batch of prints in, we uh, take photographs of them using a custom white balance and um, we do a raking shot to see if there's any irregularities in the paper, any creases, any wrinkles, anything like that. It'll show up in a raking shot. Then we do a pretty extensive condition report on the pieces. We note any tears, any parts of the paper that have been skinned, any parts of the paper that are particularly soiled, um, and we note where there's tape, if there's tape, we note where there's adhesive, and just really go through and see what's wrong with the print and what we need to do. So it's a kind of a combination condition treatment report um, where we also outline the treatments that we're going to do. Treatment then follows the documentation, and treatment generally takes anywhere from one to three hours depending on what is wrong with the piece and what needs to be done to it. Well the main thing you need to be careful of is, is really that you're working with paper and a lot of things on paper are not meant to last. It's not like a painting that's or a pot that could really survive a lot of weathering. You know, paper is very sensitive, it's very fragile. Um, a lot of our works are on, on a tissue weight paper and so you really have to be conscious of the fact that you're working with something that is sensitive to humidity and temperature changes and is sensitive to the oils on your hands. And so we really have to be careful with, with what we do to it because we may not see a difference today, but down the line, 50 years from now, our oily fingerprint might show up in the paper and it, it might be there. And so we really have to be conscious of, the, of keeping our hands clean, um, keeping our stations clean. When you're handling a print, you have to be very mindful of the material that you're working with. Because paper is such a common everyday object, it's easy to forget how easily it can tear or crumble or be crinkled. So you just have to be very delicate while you handle a print. Um, when you're transporting a print from one side of the room to the next, you have to know where you're going. You don't want to run into anything. So you have to be you have to it always has to be in the back of your mind that you are working with something that is valuable and should be um, handled extremely carefully. And the first thing we'll do is do like a surface cleaning and we have a lot of different types of erasers to, to do the surface cleaning with but we'll generally use um, what they're called like eraser crumbs or graded erasers and they're kind of crumbled up erasers that that um, have a lot of surface area and so when you're using them on a print they'll pick up a lot of dirt. Uh, we also have a groom stick which is kind of like a sticky silly putty that we'll use to pick up small accretions on prints. Uh, but we don't use that a lot because it's really sticky and it can actually pick up paper fibers. Uh, after the surface cleaning process we will go through and remove any adhesive and that includes any types of tape, your paper tapes, linen tape, glassine tape, um, any type of adhesive, if uh, the piece was spot attached to a Mac board, there'll be some sort of adhesive. And if it's water soluble, we'll usually remove that first. Um, most of our collection has linen tape or paper tape or really water soluble adhesives. And those are pretty easy to remove. But some of the collection has pressure sensitive tapes, which are more like masking tape or cellophane tapes. Um, the tape you use to wrap your 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 gifts with at Christmas time, that type of tape, and that's um, the adhesive on that is is heat sensitive, and so to remove those types of tape, which we do find on our prints, uh, we use a heat gun or a heated spatula. For any type of tear or puncture in paper, we use an adhesive uh, known as wheat starch paste. After you mend a tear or puncture, you generally reinforce it with Japanese paper. Uh, Japanese paper is tissue-like. It has the properties of a tissue paper, but it is amazingly strong. After those types of treatments are done, pieces can be humidified, which is, um, we use, usually it's, you put it in a humidity chamber, which allows the object to become wet through vapors and not through direct introduction of water. The piece is humidified so that it feels 
slightly damp and then placed in a blotter stack. Blotter is a special paper used in conservation. It's usually quite thick and it's made of 100% cotton rag. Blotter is used to help absorb the water and pull it away from your primary support. And in flattening, your piece is put between two pieces of blotter and placed under weight. This retrains the paper fibers to lay flat and in plane with one another. So your any distortions or cockling in your primary support will be minimized. After the treatment is completed, after treatment photos are taken, to again document the condition of the piece after treatment was done. And then a custom mat is made for each piece out of 100% cotton rag mat board, which is non-acidic. And then they're restored in their storage areas. So that's the full treatment that's done by the IMLS grant project here at Denison. It is very important, or it's now recognized that it's very important to care for um, one's cultural heritage. And museums are stewards of caring for this cultural heritage. So it really kind of makes sense that it goes hand in hand. Libraries, zoos are also a way of preserving a nation's or the world's cultural heritage. It's our job to take care of it. That's what we're here to do, is to keep it in perpetuity for the rest of the world as long as feasibly possible.